Hi guys, it's Mary Lisa here with Spirit Collective. I wanted to hop on a video today and talk to you about anger. How to deal with anger, what provokes anger. I don't know if there is one right way to deal with anger. For me, I can pretty confidently say that anger is a secondary emotion. Below the anger is hurt. I'm kind of ready to shed that or move on to the next level of my development. So I've compiled some knowledge about anger and how to deal with it and hopefully it can help you. When I get angry, I tend to shame myself. I tell myself I'm not allowed to feel angry. That shouldn't have hurt my feelings. I stuff it in and I hold it and I hoard it. And learning more about anger, here are some things that I've come up with. Anger is a buildup of crossed boundaries. When we feel hurt, it's usually because someone did or did not do something and we perceive it as an injustice. It can happen when we feel less than or we question how much this person cares about us or we can even question our own worth. Those are all associated with feelings of having a boundary crossed. So notice how all three of those were feelings of hurt. But instead of feeling hurt, we jump to anger because oftentimes anger is a more elevated emotion. It's more motivating. It wants us to cause action. Instead of feeling hurt and sad, which wants us to curl up and protect. When we do get hurt, more often than not, the person who we perceive that hurt us has no idea. We create these stories in our head. She should have known. I can't believe he did that. He wouldn't want that into him. In reality, because people are in their own lane, doing their own thing, they don't perceive the hurt the way we do. People are crossing boundaries of ours all the time. That's going to happen, especially without clear cut boundaries or with people that you're just meeting. I think we have a phobia of boundaries and confrontation in our culture. We perceive them as negative things, but in reality, boundaries allow you to be more compassionate. Boundaries allow you to have more self-worth. Confrontation allows you to set up these boundaries with other people. Confrontation is not always aggressive. They're not the same. So for every time you feel slighted or I feel slighted, I guarantee you the other person involved also kind of feels slighted. But it's those stories that we make up in our head without talking to the other person that really gets us in trouble. And I do this all the time. Boundary crossing can often be a simple fix. When you let someone know, hey, I just wanted to be clear. This is kind of how I was feeling and what I expected. And I feel like something else happened. How do you feel about it? When we go into the I feel statements, it really opens up a discussion for the other person to communicate with you. And that way you can lay out what you desire more clearly. The second thing that I've come to learn about anger is that it will continue building without a proper outlet. Anger just doesn't go away if we ignore it. You cannot ignore anger. All of these small frustrations, I say, let it go, let it go, let it go. Be the cool person, be the easygoing person, but all of these little things add up until I explode sideways at someone who didn't deserve it, at the person who I'm not really angry at, or at myself. You cannot ignore the bad emotions. They don't go away. If you pretend you're not hurt, what you're actually doing is just stuffing. You're reducing your self-worth. You're telling yourself that your feelings are not valid, that you don't matter. And you're also signaling to the other people involved that you're okay with being treated that way. You've allowed it. I do the same thing. I'm like, why does this person keep doing this? when I hate it, but I have never told them that I don't like it. I ignore my anger by telling myself, don't be petty, you're above this, just pretend like it doesn't matter, be easy going. But the truth is, those things do matter to me and no one will ever know unless I explicitly say so. When I was in therapy, the biggest thing that my therapist and I worked on is expressing how I felt in that moment. And it was hard because I was never really present enough to be like, hey, hey, I'm feeling hurt. When you come up with I feel statements, it instantly takes people off their defenses and lets you meet them halfway. The way to not build up anger is to talk about it in the moment. The third thing I've realized about anger is when I let it build up, I misdirect it at other people too. I know it's pretty common. When we don't properly express our anger or hurt in the moment, 
or even shortly thereafter, it just piles up on top of itself. We make up false stories in our heads because we never truly talk about them with the other person involved. Then we end up taking that anger and misplacing it on our roommate or our loved one or other people around us who we feel will not react back. The anger and frustration has to go somewhere. The fourth thing, and obviously the most interesting to me because of the mind-body connection, is anger manifests itself as illness and disease. We know this about stress. And what happens when we do that, there are chemical releases related to each of the emotions. Anger, resentment, frustration, annoyance, all of that building up over time. Being angry or resentful is known to have the same impact on your body as being chronically stressed. You have a lower immune system, so you don't fight off diseases and illnesses as well. You have chronic inflammation in your body so you're not able to digest, you're bloated or swollen or your joints hurt and there's pain everywhere, you don't sleep well and you feel chronically unhappy. Your body has a chemical response to all emotions. This is why it's the mind-body connection. Whatever you think and feel, your body listens and says, we're stressed, we have to release cortisol. If we're angry, we have to release testosterone. Or we're joyful, we're gonna release dopamine. All of these thoughts precipitate the chemical release. If you're feeling constantly resentful or frustrated or angry or pent up, you're constantly releasing the same chemicals and hormones. Your body has no time to repair. It's always in fight or flight, which means it has no time for rest and digest. So without rest and digest, your body is not repairing itself. It's constantly ill. So now the hurt is actually hurting you. So the fifth thing is facing the hurt head on will prove itself to be actually less painful, but we are hardwired to avoid pain. We think that confronting someone in that moment is painful, which it is. We don't like confrontation naturally. We favor connection over confrontation. But in order to have valuable connections, there has to be communication and boundaries. Think of short-term versus long-term. Short term, I don't want to confront this person, but if I keep it to myself, our relationship will continue to suffer. We take the short term pain confrontation versus the long term pain of resentment. If I confront this person now, I'll, I'll squash it and it will be fine. It is absolutely uncomfortable to confront someone who we perceive that hurt us because it's vulnerable to put yourself out there. And mostly what I find is people don't have the word toolkit to describe what's happening in their head. Just start with, I feel, or be honest and say, I feel like I'm making this up, but I'm not sure. Or, hey, can I talk to you about this or that? Being upfront, using your voice, and I guarantee you all of those things, which were non-blaming, will allow the other person to let their guard down and open up discussion with you. And if it does not, that is a signal for you to change the situation or the relationship. All in all, what is more important, stuffing these feelings and not addressing these feelings as they come up is more painful than actually talking about them. Journaling. I'm currently reading Rising Strong by Brene Brown and she has so many great ideas and discussions about how to deal with your hurt. One of them was journaling. When you journal, you use it as a tool to basically get out all the nasty. I know that I do this. I write the F word over and over and over again. And I would never talk like that to another person. But when the hurt is so deep, it has to be expressed. If what I need to do is write it on paper to get over it, then that's what I'm gonna do. And after I can get over that anger and that pettiness and that inner child stuff, then I can see, wow, I actually feel really hurt and vulnerable by this situation or by this person. And then you can get into it and say, okay, why am I feeling like this? What is this triggering? So using journaling as like this ugly, nasty, like purge, and then you discover what's actually underneath the anger. It is so valuable. Number seven that I've learned, and I learned this when I was in school, and I talked about it a lot with clients at the time. Anger is a mask. It's masking the more vulnerable part of us, the part of us that we're trying to protect. So if you're feeling anger, it's motivating you to change something. But once you're out of danger, 
you need to be able to look underneath that and say, wow, what, what was triggered underneath that anger? Did I feel unworthy, unloved? Anger is motivating because it tells us that something is wrong. It narrows our focus to act. But when we're angry in relational situations, what we often need to do is not act until we explore within which is why journaling is important, and come from that place of love, compassion, and vulnerability. What I'm practicing is always asking myself, why do, Why am I angry right now? And I don't always get the answer right away. You, you may not either, but what's important is we go on that journey at all. So in the next video, I'm gonna go over some ways to properly express or confront people when you're having an issue or resolving some hurt or pain. In review, anger is not a bad thing. It's a very necessary thing. We need to be able to properly express it and understand it in order to lead happier and healthier lives. So please don't be afraid of it, but also, grow an understanding of your own anger. So that's all. Please like and subscribe. Bye.